Hey class, we're talking about square roots today. Yes, we have been talking about square roots for a while now, and I'd like to clarify a few um, details about squares and square roots. So the first thing I'd like to talk about and I'd like you to think about is the fact that um, 4 times 4 gives us what? Yep, that gives us 16. Okay, often forgotten is negative 4 times negative 4 also gives us that positive 16. Okay, because a negative times a negative gives us a positive. So when we're thinking about square roots, we oftentimes only think about that positive root, sometimes referred to as the principal root. The principal root is what we use most in this real world. However, there are the negative roots. Oftentimes, when we're looking for the negative root, we will place the negative sign outside the radical here. So we have negative root 16, which is going to indicate that we are looking for that negative 4. Because while the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 16 is also negative 4. Once in a while, you'll see this positive and negative sign, this plus minus sign in front of a square root. In this case, they are, we are asking for both the positive and the negative. And we will indicate that with the sign right there. So we can just say plus or minus 4 here. You could also write it out as plus 4 and then comma minus 4. Now, think about this. We are looking for the square root of negative 16. So the question is asking, what times itself gives us negative 16? Can you think of a number? Nope, I can't either because this does not exist. This is what we call imaginary. All right, imaginary. Because it doesn't exist, but mathematicians sometimes will work with these imaginary numbers. In their mind, you can't go up to a lumber store and say, give me the negative square root of 16 and expect them to be able to measure out that distance. So this is what we call an imaginary number. It is not an irrational number. It is still, it's just imaginary. Don't get the two confused, irrational and imaginary. Neg the square root of negative 16 is imaginary. Now, the problem comes in when we start to deal with cube roots. And I'd like you to think about if you had a box, okay? Let's say we had a cube box. Cube meaning all sides are the same dimension, the length, the width, and the height, right? So there's our box. And if I told you the side was x, all, all dimensions are x. So in order to find the volume of our box, we would take x times x times x, or x cubed. Okay? x cubed gives us our volume. Now, what we're going to do is if I told you the volume was 8 units cubed, think about what number we would have to multiply by itself in order to get 8 cubic units. In this case, it would be 2 units is our dimensions of our side length. Now, with that, we can take the cube root of 8, and cube root has a little 3 here instead of being empty, and we get that to be 2. Um, in, at this point, I would expect you to be able to compute and understand the cube root of um, several perfect squares, and I will give you a list of those um, in the near future. So if you grab a calculator, um, you can check your graphing calculator. Um, there is a button called, it says math. The, in the fourth position in that math, you will see a cube root symbol. If you press the 4, it will then insert the cube root symbol into your graphing calculator screen, and then you can type in any number, like 27. When you type in 27, 
you uh, the cube root of 27, you should get 3. Okay? Now, if you are looking for the negative cube root, we will often put a negative sign out front here. But why do we have the cube root of a negative 27? And to be honest, this is not imaginary now, unlike square roots. Because if you think about the cube root of negative 27, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. Because if you think about negative, oops, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, you get a negative number here. So we can't have negative cube roots, and we don't get anything crazy like that. Okay, so we get the negative cube root, the excuse me, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3 here. So it is often, um, if we want the positive or the negative, you, it is usually indicated inside the radical here, and it's not imaginary. So don't be afraid of that. So the cube root is just what number times itself three times gives us that value, just like square roots. Now, the other thing that we have to deal with with square roots and cube roots are fractions. Not so scary. Honestly, if you have a fraction and you're looking for the square root of that, you can just take the square root of the numerator and divide it by the square root of the denominator. So in this case, if you had the square root of 9 25ths, you would get 3 fifths. Not so bad, right? So let's say we are taking the cube root of 1 27th, okay? So the cube root of 1 27th might be a volume of an object that we're dealing with, such as a cube. And so in order to find one side length, we would just take the cube root of 1, and we get 1, and the cube root of 27, which is 3. So the cube root of 1 27th is 1 third. Not so scary, is it? Okay, finally, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about exact values versus estimates. Okay, exact values. If I ask you for the exact value of the square root of 16, you could definitely tell me it's 4. No problem. We know that, right? But what about those irrational numbers? Those numbers like the square root of 17 or the square root of 5. If ever asked, what is the exact value of the square root of 17? What are you going to tell me? Did you tell me 4.123 something, something, something? If you did, you would be wrong because that is not the exact value. Any number that you're going to get, even in your calculator, is an estimate because remember, irrational numbers go on forever. They never end and they never repeat. So you're never going to be able to tell me the exact value of the square root of 17 unless you tell me the square root of 17. So if asked for the square root exactly, or say maybe a side length of a square with an area of 17, the exact value would be the square root of 17. That is what we call exact, okay? Anything else that I ask for, I will say estimate, round, and you'll usually have some wiggle room there too. If given um, a calculator, you could tell me if you rounded this to the one for one decimal place, 4.1. That's going to be your estimate, okay? That is your estimate there, okay? So if, um, if this were a test without a calculator, you could be in the ballpark, something greater than 4, probably less than 4.5. So, and as long as you're in the ballpark, you'll get credit for that as well. That's an estimate. But if you're asked for an exact length, you would just leave it the square root of 17 unless it was a perfect square, then you could tell me that number, okay? So, exact value of the square root of 5 is the square root of 5. Estimation of the square root of 5, what are you going to give me? Ballpark, somewhere between 2 and 3 on the lower end of that range. Um, 
an estimate with a calculator of about 2.2 would be acceptable, okay? So hopefully if you have any questions on squares or square roots, please ask when you see me next or send me an email. Um, if not, uh, good luck with your practice problems.